Now let us look at the question. The technique of hydroponics used for growing plants does not require. The options are water, air, soil and minerals. We all know that soil is a very important and vital factor for the growth of plants, right? It is because the roots absorb water as well as minerals from the soil. Can you think of a way in which plants can be grown without the soil being present at all? Yes, it is possible and that is exactly what is achieved by this technique known as hydroponics. Hydro, we know, means water, right? So hydro refers to water. In this technique called hydroponics, plants can be grown in aqueous solution of water along with some nutrients without the presence of soil. Okay, so in the question that is given to us here, we are asked what is not required in hydroponics. So the options are water, air, soil and minerals. Hydroponics is a soilless way of growing plants. So the correct answer to this question is soil. I will show you a basic setup of a, a hydroponics unit and this is uh, pretty much how a basic setup of a hydroponics unit will look like. So you have a container here that contains the nutrient solution. So in this nutrient solution you have water and along with water there are dissolved nutrients that are required for growth of the plant. Okay. Also what is important here is aeration. We know that roots also have living cells, right? So just like other cells of the plant, the root cells also need to respire in order to survive. So oxygen is required for cellular respiration to take place. Aeration tube or an aerating tube ensures that oxygen is delivered to uh, the nutrient solution so that the roots can make use of it for cellular respiration. Another important function that this aerating tube or aeration in this unit uh, does is that it makes sure that there's a steady current that is maintained inside this uh, solution, nutrient solution, and it ensures that the nutrients don't settle down, okay? Therefore, uh, by aerating, we are, uh, there are two things that are taking place. Firstly, oxygen is being delivered to the roots that are present inside the nutrient solution so that they can undergo, uh, they can perform cellular respiration and get their energy requirement. And uh, secondly, it also ensures that there's a uh, circulation of nutrients through this solution, okay? So that is the function of aeration in a hydroponics unit. And we have a funnel. The funnel is to add nutrients and water. As time goes on, the plants make use of water and nutrients for their metabolism, right? Water is important for performing photosynthesis. As plants make use of that, the solution will get depleted of both uh, nutrients and water. And by placing a funnel in this hydroponics unit, we can add water and mineral nutrients as and when they're required, okay? So this technique, the idea behind this technique was given by a person known as Julius von Sachs. Okay, so I will give you the definition of hydroponics now. It is the technique of growing plants in a soil-free nutrient solution. That is what hydroponics is. In this technique, plants are grown in a nutrient solution that contains minerals required for the growth of the plants. The nutrient solution has to be constantly aerated. I told you why. It needs to be constantly aerated for the proper growth of the plants. Hydroponics is successfully used these days for the commercial production. They're using it for commercial production of tomatoes, seedless cucumbers and lettuce. Okay, so in the question we were asked what is not required in hydroponics and the correct answer is soil because hydroponics is a soil free kind of uh, culture. So the correct answer to this question is option C. I now have a question pertaining to the essentiality of elements in plants. Let's take a look at it. Which of the following is a criterion required for the essentiality of an element in plants? The options are the element must be directly involved in the metabolism of the plant. The element must be absolutely essential for growth and reproduction. The requirement of the element is specific and it cannot be replaced by another element. Option D, all of these. 
First, let me tell you what essentiality of any uh, mineral element is all about in plants. Plants have roots that penetrate the soil, right? Generally, the plant roots penetrate the soil. The soil is a reservoir of nutrients for the plant. The plant roots absorb water as well as minerals from the soil. There are plants that can absorb elements like gold and radioactive str strontium from the soil. Now, there are six, 60 different types of elements that can be found uh, being present in different plants. Now, just because a mineral element is found to be present in a plant does not necessarily indicate that it is required for its growth. Okay, so for example, if you take a plant that is grown near a, a nuclear testing site, it could have absorbed and accumulated the radioactive element strontium. Just because you find strontium present in this plant, it does not mean that strontium is required for its growth. Okay, so there are so many, I, like I mentioned, there are as many as 60 elements that are found being present in different types of plants. Not all of them are essential. Okay, so there are some criteria uh, that needs to be fulfilled in order for an element to be considered essential. Okay, there are three such criteria. I will tell you about it. Now, the first thing is, it should be directly involved in metabolism. Unless that mineral element is directly involved in the metabolism of the plant, it cannot be considered as an essential element. Now, that is the first criterion. Secondly, it should be essential for both growth and reproduction. The element, if it is essential for both growth and reproduction, and in its absence, if that element is not present, the plant cannot complete its life cycle and set seeds. What is life cycle of a plant? We know that plants, at least angiosperms, they begin their um, life from a seed, right? In sexual reproduction, the seed germinates and a new plant is formed. And this plant for a period of time uh, undergoes vegetative growth and then there is uh, reproduction takes place, right? The flowers will be formed in um, angiospermic plants and then the seeds will be produced in the ovary of the plant, which post uh, dispersal, the seeds will become a new plant. Now that is the life cycle of a plant. If the element, if in the absence of an element, growth and reproduction does not take place, then that element is said to be essential, okay? So, in order for the element to be considered essential, the second criterion is that it should be essential for its growth as well as, as, well as its reproduction. Without that element, seed setting cannot take place. The life cycle of the plant cannot be completed. Now, that is the second criterion. The last one is that its requirement is extremely specific and it cannot be replaced by another element. For example, let's say uh, there's uh, an element A that is supposed to perform some function. If that element is not present in the soil, instead element B is present in the soil. Now B should not be able to perform the function of A. Okay, so the function that A is performing has to be extremely specific and that element has to be irreplaceable. If it is not uh, replaceable, then it is said to be an essential element. So, these three are the criteria uh, which we use to classify elements uh, to whether they are essential or not essential for the plant's growth and development. So, all of these three criteria were mentioned in the options A, B, C and in this question. Since all of them are criteria uh, to classify or uh, categorize elements into essential and non-essential, the correct answer to this question is option D all of these. Here's the question. The activator for enzymes Rubisco and Pepcase is a, the options are micronutrient, macronutrient, beneficial element and trace element. So this is a slightly tricky question because they have not directly given out the name of the element. We have to find out which is that element that acts like an activator for these enzymes Rubisco and Pepcase. Rubisco stands for ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase, while pepcase stands for phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase. Okay, so we have to figure out which is that element that acts like the activator first thing and then find out if it is 
a micronutrient, a macronutrient, a beneficial element or a trace element. Now both these enzymes, Rubisco and Pepcase, they are very important in photosynthesis. Okay, so during photosynthesis, they are involved in carbon fixation and it is magnesium that activates these two enzymes. Sometimes some enzymes require cofactors in order to perform their function. Metal ions act like inorganic cofactors. Okay, so here it is the magnesium ion that is acting like the cofactor. What exactly happens uh, or how exactly cofactors which are metal ions in this case perform their function is they will form coordination bonds between the enzyme and the substrate. Okay, so whenever an enzyme has to uh, perform its function, it has to bind to the substrate, right? Enzyme, uh, the substrate binds to the enzyme at a specific site known as the active site. So at the site, to the side chains of the active sites, these metal ions will form coordination bonds and they will also form bonds with the substrate. By doing so, they assist in the enzymatic uh, reaction, okay? So, magnesium, we know that uh, it is magnesium that activates Rubisco and Pepcase. We have to now find out if it is a micro, macronutrient or beneficial element or a trace element. Since magnesium is required by plants in large quantities, it is classified to be a macronutrient, okay? Because it is required in higher amounts. So the correct answer to this question is option B, macronutrient. Here's a very easy direct question. Dash is needed for the synthesis of auxins. The options are zinc, molybdenum, copper and potassium. Okay, so uh, of the given uh, elements in the options, we have to find out which is that element that is required for the synthesis of auxins. What are auxins? Auxins are plant growth regulators, also known as phytohormones, that are involved in various physiological activities of the plant and they are very vital for the growth and development of the plant. Auxin, one example for auxin is indole 3-acetic acid, which is IAA in short. Now, auxins... Uh, the precursor for synthesis of auxins is an amino acid that is known as tryptophan. And for the synthesis of this amino acid tryptophan, zinc is essential. Okay, so zinc is required for synthesis of tryptophan and tryptophan is the precursor for the biosynthesis of auxins. Therefore, for synthesis of auxins indirectly, zinc is required. So the correct answer to this question is zinc. So here's a uh, the structure of uh, indole 3-acetic acid given. So that's about this question. Zinc is involved in synthesis of auxins like indole 3-acetic acid. Now let us look at the question. Which of the following is incorrect? The options are chlorine splitting of water during light reaction, magnesium a constituent of chlorophyll, Manganese, splitting of water during light reaction and sulfur activates catalase enzyme. Now, in the options, there are different elements given and one of their functions mentioned. We have to find out which element is not correctly matched with its function. Okay, so let us begin with the first option. It is about splitting of water. Splitting of water is a reaction that takes place during the light reaction phase of photosynthesis. So what happens then is water splits to release uh, oxygen. We say that plants take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen, right? The oxygen that plants give out comes from this splitting of water. And for splitting of water to take place during the light reaction, both manganese as well as chlorine are essential. Okay, so those two statements are correct since both of them are involved in uh, splitting of water during the light reaction phase of photosynthesis. Okay, so when water splits, you get protons, electrons and oxygen and that oxygen will be liberated. Next, we have magnesium and chlorophyll. Magnesium is an important constituent of chlorophyll. So the chlorophyll, as we know, is a pigment that is involved in photosynthesis. It absorbs light and then traps the uh, light energy that can be used to synthesize uh, food in the form of glucose. So this chlorophyll pigment has a porphyrin ring with magnesium as its central atom. Okay, we can see that here. Right here in the center, there's magnesium. So magnesium very much is a component of chlorophyll. So the only option that we're left with is sulfur 
activating catalase enzyme. Now, uh, the function of sulfur is, it is a component of amino acids like cysteine and methionine. Apart from that, it is also an important constituent of coenzymes in several vitamins. But it is not involved in the activation of catalase enzyme. It is iron that activates catalase enzyme. Now, what is a catalase enzyme? So, um, catalase is an enzyme that is involved in the conversion of hydrogen peroxide, which is toxic to the cells, to water and oxygen. Okay, so it has four. Like I mentioned, uh, it is iron that activates the catalase enzyme. So, it has four iron containing heme groups that allow it to react with hydrogen peroxide. So, iron here acts like a cofactor for the functioning of catalase enzyme. So, the correct answer to this question is sulfur activating catalase enzyme because that is uh, the function that is incorrect with respect to sulfur.